Hey guys, it's Nadu here, and today we are back with another React video. We're gonna act. Hi, I'm Petra from Serbia, anime and I have an extremely story. rare condition where my aging process is much slower than that of regular people. Like I when I was six years old, I looked like a dumb two-year-old toddler, which made people treat me like one. And things got even worse as a teenager. But before I continue. Click wow. like and subscribe. Because no, of my don't. condition, Click my like parents and decided to homeschool me till I was a bit older. I only got to hang out with other kids at the playground, and I'd get picked on all the time because I looked so much smaller than everybody. Once, when I was about eight well, years old, I was playing on the slides in the park people. when a worried-looking woman came running to me. Sweetie, are you lost? No. Oh, poor baby. Probably can't understand a thing. You must be so scared. Do I look scared? And I'm not a baby. But she wasn't even listening to me. And before I knew it, she yes. was calling over a police it's called death the street. People. We have a missing child here, officer. Please, help oh her find God. her mommy and daddy. Baby, how is she missing when she's The policeman whisked me off to the station and started taking pictures of me for missing child posters. Oh my God. I know my parents' number and address. I live right across the the street from the playground and you guys kidnapped me this was the beginning of many many times my parents had to come get me from the police station i finally joined school in the seventh grade the minute i walked into the classroom a girl elbowed me roughly in okay okay what i call i call cap i call cap i call cap when how did it even possible to wear when you grow older, wait, what? What did that say? Are you talking about But how? Like, the title says that. Oh my god. I'm not used to it, Dad. But the title says that. Says that the, old, the older I become, the younger I look. Mind blowing. Then. Then she should, she should look like he, oh, you know what, I'm an idiot, so like, let's go, okay, let's continue, I'm an idiot, let's go. Sad, I think you've lost your way, kid. Oh, if only I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I would be a millionaire by now, and I wouldn't need to be in this school with dumb people like you. And with that, I pushed her aside and took my seat. When I did the math problems correctly in the first lesson, the teacher called me over, looking all starstruck. Wow, Petra, you're a genius. Thanks. Why? Because you solved these algebra problems meant for 12-year-olds. But I am 12 years old. The teacher just giggled and then did something I hated. She pulled my cheek. Oh, aren't you a little cutie pie? Yes, you definitely have the mind of a 12-year-old. No matter she how is a 12 I said it. Actually, no the teacher's kind of right. She does have the mind of a 12-year-old. Yeah, but... I make some sense. Like Goku. They all thought I was some kind of. Have you ever? Has anyone ever watched Goku? Like Goku has a man of a forty-eight years old person, but he's only like about twenty-six, I think. No, not twenty-six, thirty-six, because he died a bunch of times. But that's irrelevant. So you know what? Let me just shut up. Baby genius who'd been bumped up a few grades. Eventually, I gave up and let everyone believe I was super smart. This didn't really help me become popular or make friends, though. Jessica, the meanest girl in class, wasn't too happy because everyone thought I was the smartest, and she made sure everyone constantly made fun of me. Does your butt look big because you're wearing a diaper? What kind of language is that book in? Goo goo ga ga. Another time, I was Shut eating lunch by myself when Jessica know. suddenly stopped by my table. Aw, how is the baby gonna eat all that with her little baby teeth? Why are you this way, Jessica? What do you mean? I mean, why are you so awful to me? You're the most popular girl in class. Yeah, I know. But before you showed up, out of nowhere, I was the smartest too. Fine, you're the prettiest and the smartest girl in the world. Can you leave me alone now? Please? Sure. But let me mash everything for the little baby to eat first. And with that, she started pounding my food with her fist. OMG, you are such a psycho. And with that, 
I picked up the smushed piece of cake and flung it at her face. Exactly. She picked up my glass of juice and dunked it on my head. And before we knew it, everybody joined in for fun, and a full-scale food fight had broken out. We both got detention. And after that day, I found a corner in the little playpen for the kindergarten kids and basically had lunch there by myself the next three years. Until one day, Josh came and sat next to me. He's golden Josh had hair. Just He's golden hair. Got the looks. Mr. Perfect lady. Dolly. With all the popular girls drooling all over him, I was sure he wouldn't notice someone like me, which is why I was pretty shocked to find him here. Why do you always have lunch alone? Is this your first time? It's because he's course, not popular. Don't, don't like get the word. He, he seems soft. I don't. I don't trust him. I don't understand why someone as adorable as you is here either. I was so annoyed at how fast that made my heart beat. After that, Josh and I became really good why friends. Why does it He'd turn into a black love stories? These love stories are black. Tell, me about, Since tell fell me about. Tell me about the slowness of growing. Are you gonna turn more back more into a baby? To I hated like, to admit it. I just had the biggest crush on him. Oh the annual spring dance is around the corner, and it. You're probably like, why are you talking over the video? Just shut your mouth. But literally, this is a little event. Whack love story. Because what we should be knowing is how the stupid, uh, the older I become, the younger I look. So that means if she's six, that means she looks like a baby. But it has that fact in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did show that she was a baby. She looks like a baby face. So that means the older I become, the younger I look, right? So if she were above seven, the older I become, the younger I look. So that means if he's seven, she'll still look like a baby. How it how does she have this mature face like like that? How? Because the older I become, the younger I look. Mind blowing, right? I don't see anything mind blowing about this. Because if she's becoming older, that means she's coming younger, right? That means she should but she should be kept at baby stage, right? Baby face. Baby baby. Right? Am I onto something? I might be onto something. The younger I look. So in the picture it showed that she she's really she really short, you know. So that means that means the younger I look, that means she's shorter, right? Well, that means she should revert back to baby stage, right? Because the young, older I become, the younger I look, and um, um, in one minute. No, I just don't understand. It's it's all anyone could talk about at school. All the girls were yapping non-stop about their dresses and who they'd be going with. Of course, I was hoping Josh would ask me out. But when he didn't, I decided I didn't need to wait around like a sappy Disney princess. I'd ask him out myself. I bought tickets for the opening show of the new Avengers movie. Princess, Just as we were about to enter the theater, like one of the cinema staff stopped me. Hey, little girl. You can't go in. That's a PG-13 movie. I'm almost 16. Here, look at my ID. We see fake IDs all the time, kid. Sorry, but I can't let you go. And with that, he pushed me out of line and refused to listen to me anymore. Oh Ugh, my I god! I can't believe this. Should I just go then? Um, go? I mean, what's the point of wasting both the tickets? We'll still have dinner together, okay? And just like that, he turned and went inside. He's not I good. was furious. I couldn't even go anywhere because he'd driven me here. When he finally came out after three hours, he was practically jumping with excitement. OMG, that was epic. Iron Man snapped his fingers and died, but he saved the world. He'd not only watched the movie without me, he'd ruined it for me completely. I thought maybe the rest of the evening would go a little No! You ruined the Disney movie! When the you waitress brought us our fortune person. cookies, I looked over I would like excitedly at Josh right to open away. his and no read the little note inside. Will you be my date for the spring dance, Josh? He looked up at me in complete shock. Petra, 
I don't know how to say this, but, uh... You ugly! Oh, how could you even think that? You're more like a little sister to me. Oh, I've already asked sister. Jessica out. Man, you've your really sister. made things your awkward. Sister. I felt sister. so utterly crushed and stupid. I flung a glass of water in his face. I wish I could snap my fingers right now and make you disappear. And with that, I ran out of there and took the bus home. Nobody was more grateful than me when well, the stupid high school... Well, what if you think about it? Prettier than her, you know, and, you know, and I was off to college. You know, it wasn't too far from my town, so my parents could visit me often or come bail me out every time an officer thought I was an underage driver. Gosh, this is the third time this month. Why are you police officers so dumb? Can't you see I have a real license? She doesn't mean that, officer. Come on, sweetie. Let's go. Even your own parents? Oh my god, your own parents no one understood are trash. how frustrating it was for me to be treated like a kid all the time. Until I met Andrew. In my second year at university, I took up a job as a professor's assistant for one of the courses. Okay, okay. She's still a kid. Wait, 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 wait. Does, like, when she gets old, you, you know that your face changed and then you don't want to be a fool. But... So that means when she becomes older, the the time shrinking thing, if you want to say it like that, makes her become younger. But does that like affect your immune system when you're when you're little? Your immune system is like super strong. When you're old, your immune system is really weak. So does your looks like affect like your muscle movement or any of that? Like the question need to be asked here. All we have, all we know is that she looks like a kid. Right? Because it like, is every time she gets older and changes her face, the, the the side effect thing or the younger thing makes her like nullifies the older, you know? Like see right here, he she becomes older, that means her face changes. So the the thing that makes her look young would just nullify it by moving like the same pace, right? <laughs> Trying to make sense of what doesn't make any sense is impossible. So I'm not going to even bother my small brain. The other students made fun of me behind my back. But one day, they went really overboard. The professor was unwell, and I was taking the class in his place. As soon as I turned my back to the board, I got hit by a dozen paper balls. I turned around to see everyone snickering. Chee -chee, I'm get your the teacher. That's all right. That's all you need to do. I'm going to tell you You're what not our teacher. Get the strap. You can't even reach the top of the board the without and then they will a stool. Go back to school, <laughs> loser. You can't behave <laughs> this way with me. I want everyone who's responsible to apologize right now. Or you'll do what? Go crying to your mommy? I'll fail you in every single assignment. You do remember I grade them, right? Oh no, I'm scared. Miss Petra, ching, you ching, yeah. me if I all you need you to do is get the strap. Lollipop. It's so simple. That's it. Get out. Happy to. Come on, guys. Let's go. Get the strap the already. High school smarty pants. And just like that, the whole class walked out. I tried to keep my cool, but when everyone had left, I burst into angry tears. Just then, no, you the can't burst into tears. You just gotta get strapped. And I looked up to see that it was Andrew. I'm really sorry about the way they treated you. I think you're really smart and, and beautiful. We became friends, and soon after, we started dating. He was just the sweetest guy, and even though he looked much older than me, he was never ashamed to hold my hand in public, even if it got us weird looks. A few weeks later, I had an internship interview in another school, and Andrew offered to see me off at the airport. Just as I was leaving, he took my hand. Good luck, babe. I hope you get it, but I'll really miss you. And with that, he pulled me in for our first kiss. My head was still spinning with joy, and suddenly, I saw a few policemen walking towards us. Sir, please move away from the kid. What's the problem, officer? We've recently had many reports of a gang kidnapping young girls, and you need to come down to the station with us to answer a few questions. Wait, what? He's not a kidnapper. He's my boyfriend, and I'm 20 years old. The policeman didn't listen to a word we said, and we were taken down to the station. My parents had to come down again with my birth certificate and baby pictures before they finally let us go. It turned out that the people at the airport had been making videos of the whole thing, and it had gone viral on social media with people saying all sorts of mean things about me and Andrew. And to make things worse, the company I had an interview with wasn't happy that I didn't show up, so I lost the internship too. 
I was beyond furious now. I took to social media myself and posted a video talking about how I'd always been discriminated against because of the way I looked. The video went viral and I started receiving a lot of sympathy messages and support. The public pressure made the police issue an official apology and the company even offered me the internship again. But my condition had really sparked an interest in the public and I was being invited to tons of TV and Okay, okay. I heard was, more to that then you know what I gotta say to enough, it. I realized that people envied me. One morning I picked of up the local people newspaper from the door people and always was horrified want to, to see my my face splashed like across the front page with the headline, Girl Discovers Secret to Eternal Youth. Babe, come here and look outside the window. To my shock, there was a massive crowd of people of course, outside everyone our apartment wants building. To and the minute they spotted me in the window, everybody, right? they started screaming. If anybody could get Have you discovered the right fountain right? of youth? Tell us where it is. What do you eat to look so young? I'll pay anything for it. With your anti-aging formula for youthful skin, we can become millionaires. Come work for our skincare company. This was complete madness, and I had to put an end to it. I opened the window, and everybody became quiet to hear what I had to say. Listen, there is no secret. It's a condition I've always had, and it's not a blessing. I've never had anyone take me seriously my whole life. I spent all of high school being bullied. My message to everyone is that we oh all need to learn God. to be you happy in our take, own skin. You should just sell it with the antibiotic products and just become a millionaire right off the bat. I don't know didn't what that's what I would again, do. But I you still know, became I'm pretty famous nature, and was so regularly you know, called for talks on self-acceptance and against bullying. I'm married to Andrew now, and we have two young kids, and secretly... Whack! Love really stories! I didn't even get my I answers right. Are you, mm, you know what? Since that was such a whack love story, we're gonna do another one. You know what? We're gonna do another one. Whack love stories alert! Whack love stories. Okay. Let's, uh, Please don't meet just some whack love story. Whack love story about bullying and all that stuff. Bullying is not going to stop. Even if you preach about it all night, bullying is not going to stop. Like, it's not even, it's not even funny anymore. It's not even funny anymore. Follow your crush into the basement. Okay, that's not smart. You have coma, but you can hear everything. That sounds interesting. Let's see. Please don't be wacky old stories. <laughs> like, can I like, get no wacky old stories, please? Uh, maybe you're right. That sounds cool. No wacky old stories, please. Hi there. I'm Aria. Imagine I can already yourself sense wacky old stories. I can already hungry. sense it. I'm hurting. I sense you. I love you. Imagine yourself being imprisoned inside a body. A body which doesn't obey your orders at all. People are all around you, yet you feel alone. It wouldn't be easy, would it? Well, oh my I god, it sounds whack already. <laughs> it sounds whack already, people. It sounds whack already, people. Well, it was that I fell off the tree. I was my mom and dad's only child. We were a middle class family and we lived in a small house with a stunning backyard. Yeah. Whack love story. <laughs> when my dad first bought the house, he found a tree house in the oak tree built by the kids who had lived in the house before oh, us. After a lot of convincing, wait, 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 my father wait, 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 agreed to fix wait, the tree house. He even wait, made a wooden ladder so I could climb into the tree easily. I remember helping my dad decorate its walls with posters and photos of my favorite band. For a second, you might be thinking, what a sweet family. But no, this wasn't the case exactly. You see, my mom was a moody woman who yelled a lot, and nothing me or my dad did could please her. She would spend the whole night smoking cigarettes in front of the TV. Smoking and cigarettes in front dad, of the TV? That's like, uh, that's like wanting your child to become crack, you know? Home crack. From school, there was nothing for me to do but go and play with my dolls in the treehouse. For my 13th birthday, my dad bought me the best gift ever. He bought me a little white puppy that was so Actually, that's the worst this ever. Like, for me, like, puppies are, like, medium. I loved Snowball, and I taught him lots of tricks. We used to spend all day together in the treehouse. We would only go home to eat dinner. That way, we steered clear of my mom's yelling and her okay. long fights with my okay. I watched the sky a lot during my days in the treehouse. Okay. Back then, my dad only came home after the sun had set, so I'd watch the stars lighting up the sky. They looked amazing. 
I knew that those stars were nothing but meteors traveling fast through the sky as they burned. But everything my dad told me about them made them seem magical. One time I was watching the like, sky. Whenever I look at it. Like, when if, I don't know if it's just my location, but whenever I look up in the sky, I don't really see any stars, just like, it's like, I mean, we passed the star era, like, oh my god. time ago, there was a poor man praying to the gods every day. However, the gods were always busy, so they didn't answer him. One day, he screamed so loudly, the mountain shook. The gods looked at him and listened to his troubles. He became so sad and cried burning stars. So this way, whenever he saw a falling star, I call Cap. Wish, and the gods would make them come true. But can this be possible? I asked. And he replied, Legends are a beautiful thing to hear, but not. Legends are beautiful, fake things to hear. So faker. How can we know if they're faker than the first love. I asked. He just smiled at me and said it was time to head back to the house. <laughs> On that same night, while I was lying in bed hugging Snowball, it started to feel like my life was falling apart. My mom was screaming hysterically at my dad, telling him that the money he was bringing in was no longer enough, and that he should start searching for an extra job. She said that she could no longer go out with her friends because she was so embarrassed. She couldn't afford to buy new dresses every time they went out like her friends did. Oh my god. Gold digger. Gold digger. Like, hashtag gold digger alert. For a long time, until I could no longer bear it. Gold digger. Gold digger, yeah, yeah. She's a gold digger and wasting money. Like, I don't understand how you can waste money. Like, you just have, you, all you need is like seven shirts. That's all. Like, seven shirts, seven pants. And seven yard shirts and seven yard pants. That's all you need to live. Because if you could take care of all of the seven things, you could just use them every day you go out, right? Like, you do have to buy new dresses all the time and fill up your cars, eh? Because this is how I see it. You buy, uh, you buy, you buy seven going out dresses when you go on Sunday, Saturday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. See that? And now seven yard shirts where you wear in your yard or in your house. Isn't Suddenly it I that if I was able simple? To hear him, that means like, I wasn't isn't it that it's simple? God. And From you don't need to, like, pack up on this and speaking to my parents. He said, the damage she suffered to her head due to the fall has resulted in severe internal bleeding in her brain, which is preventing enough oxygen from reaching her body, resulting in a coma. But I wasn't in a coma. I was there with them. I heard my dad crying and my mom inquiring about the treatment fees. I wanted to scream, to call out for them, to say something, anything. But I wasn't able to even talk at that time. Suddenly, I was just a vegetable, unable to do anything but listen. Most people don't think twice before talking or connecting with others. They do it automatically. But I had absolutely no way of speaking to anyone. For the last 13 years, I had been a normal girl. A girl who loved her dad, her dog, and who loved to play. I was happy and healthy. But now, suddenly, that had all changed. The doctors didn't know what to do. They thought I was completely in a coma, but they always treated me nicely. All the time I spent in the hospital, I only heard my dad's voice. My mom had completely vanished. I didn't know where she was, and I didn't hear anything related yeah. to her. Until Call the day the doctor alert. said there is nothing more they can do, and that it is best for me to return to my parents' home. I heard my mom arguing with my dad. She didn't want me back home. I was, according to her, a burden that she didn't want to carry. But I went home anyway. I was happy because I was returning home. I heard my dad telling my mom that he finished the treehouse because that was the last thing I asked him to do. That's why he insisted on bringing me back home, so I could be near the things I loved. However, things went downhill from there. I lost my ability to move. I failed all the mind exams they conducted on me in the hospital, so the doctors told my parents they could treat me as if I didn't exist. My return home was just a hopeless attempt at keeping my unconscious body comfortable until, well, until I died. My dad tried his hardest to keep me comfortable, and that really annoyed my mom. Their friends stopped visiting after a while, and the money dad was providing was no longer enough. Machines that were keeping me alive were too expensive. Before, I was able to escape my mom's screaming and ranting, but today, I was stuck with it without them even knowing that I could hear them. The whole thing felt like a nightmare. 
When my dad first got me Snowball, I thought that he was very smart and could just understand me without even having to talk to him. But my dad used to laugh and say, Dogs are about as smart as a three-year-old. They can feel when you're happy, sad, or scared, but they can't read your mind. Telepathy? Down, though, no, that's twin telepathy, no right? Dog. Twin telepathy. He was special enough well, to be able to read my thoughts because we had this insane twin bond. Every time my parents started their screaming matches, I'd hear Snowball sitting beside me and barking in a low voice, as if to tell me that everything would be alright. I was sure that Snowball knew I was a prisoner in my body, unlike what everyone else believed. He never left my side. His breathing was Snowball my only comfort. Snowball is the man. For a while, I used to be entertained by my father when he entered my room at night and started moving my body left and right to help my blood circulate. Once he was done, he'd sit beside me and talk with me for an hour or so about his day, like he used to before. But that didn't last for long. The last talk he had with me was about how tired he was, both physically and mentally. That he was very upset he'd lost his little girl, the only person in the whole world who used to listen to him. That day, I heard him sobbing so loudly. Then he suddenly said, I can no longer bear to look at you like this anymore. After that, he stopped talking to me altogether. A year quickly turned into two. And I felt the person I used to be disappearing. Not just her body, but also her memories. My mom said that she'd had enough with my stuff taking up so much room, and that she could put the space to good use. My dad wasn't able to refuse, so he just said that he'd move my things to the treehouse. It wasn't long until I was moved out of my room to another one that was more practical and way smaller. It had barely enough room for my bed, machines, and for one person to be able to move around in. That was enough for me, according to my mom. What was worse was that this little room was next to the living room. That meant that I could hear everything. I mean, literally down to the tiniest details. Two years turned to three, and I was still in the same place with no one aware of my existence. It was like I was a ghost. Whenever my mom's friends came to visit, they used to ignore me, as if I was just part of the furniture. I was dead to everyone, just not in the ground. Only Snowball remained at my side. My mom and her friends' conversations were ridiculous. They gossiped a lot and couldn't stop judging their relatives. Sometimes they talked about clothes, travel, and their husbands. I once heard my mom talking ill about my dad. She said he was the reason behind her unhappiness and that she had met some rich guy at a coffee shop. That guy had invited her for a drink and she'd gone to meet him. And now she was seriously considering leaving me and my dad. For me, that was the worst part about those three years. Feeling totally powerless and not being able to stand in front of her and not being able to scream, you're an ungrateful woman. All the things dad did for you and yet it's never enough. Now you want to leave him because some other guy has more money? My poor dad didn't deserve my mom, or even me. I found myself in utter darkness, and the darkness was swallowing my dad up whole. I couldn't remember you much about my life before the fall. I was so terrified to forget like everything. I remembered having a friend called Maisie, but I couldn't remember what we used to do or how we would spend time together. Seriously? I remember loving science, Seriously? but I no longer remembered any of the stuff that we'd learned at school. At the same time, my mind closed. You should have just memories, kept it in your mind time, and you masked it. Like, what do you do, Holly? Just the people. I had to find a way to stay here, in this world, even if I had to create my own world inside my head. Maisie became my best friend. She always visited on Sundays. I really call Cap, but I really want to see how this ends. At least it stayed on par, and it's not a whack love story. All I can say is at least it's not a whack love story. That's all I want. It's not a whack love story, so you know what? I got this. It's okay. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. No. I don't wanna. I just got the box. Rip box. Okay. Mm -hmm. Part two. So part two is special. It was pitch black, so I missed a step on the ladder, and then my leg slipped. The damage she suffered to her head due to the fall has resulted in severe internal bleeding in her brain, resulting in a coma. But I wasn't in a coma. That meant that I could hear everything. A year quickly turned into two. 
and I felt the person I used to be disappearing. I had to find a way to stay like, here in this I world. I don't really care, like, the person she used to be disappearing, but I remember stuck. loving science, but I no longer remembered any of the stuff that we'd learned at school. At the that's, same time, that's my real mind problem. clung onto those memories, and at the same time, started creating new ones that hadn't existed before. What? I had to find a way to stay here in this world. Even if I had to create my own world inside my head, Maisie became my best friend. She always visited on Sundays. Every time she came, she talked about her classmates, how Sophie had fallen in love with Joe, and how Kit had failed the math test, so the teacher had punished him by making himself 10 equations in front of the whole class. Maisie's visits, though they were only in my head, were the best parts of my day. I didn't know that what I was doing in order to entertain myself was actually a kind of exercise for my damaged mind. I didn't realize that I was helping myself get better. If I'd known, I wouldn't have waited three years to start doing it. My consciousness was slowly returning. You yes. might wonder, how did I realize that? Well, simply, I felt my eyelids flutter whenever Maisie visited me. Believe it or not, our thoughts have incredible power. But even exactly. so, no one knew that I was coming out of a coma. Of Ever since I'd was. first been diagnosed as being in a coma, I was totally aware of everything happening around me. Exactly like a normal person. But I was stuck inside a silent body, it seemed. A mind full of life that no one noticed. I started accepting this cruel right, fate and got lost in my made-up thoughts. Suddenly, I could no longer tell the difference between what was real and what wasn't. There's a fine line that separates memory from imagination, and I clearly overstepped it. But the one thing I was absolutely certain of was that the fights my parents had and my mom's betrayal were 100% real. After four years, my mom had had enough of me. How long must I endure moving this body left and right without any response? She would yell in my dad's face, and he would answer, Until she dies. Imagine being in my position. Not being able to speak to a friend, not feeling loved anymore, not having any ambitions or dreams, no hope that's of being day. able to look uh, forward to anything. To All my thoughts were miserable ones. I lived in fear. And if I was being honest, I was waiting for death so I could escape from all of this. I pictured myself dying in some nursing home, cold and alone. And so that's how I spent those four long years. Snowball's existence was my only comfort. My eyelids started fluttering a lot. You might think that's not really a big deal. Anyone can do that without trying, but that wasn't the case with me. Snowball noticed what was going on and started to bark for hours and hours without stopping. My mom couldn't tolerate it. My dad came home and Snowball continued to bark. Everyone went to bed and Snowball was still barking. He was just like me, w wishing for someone to realize that I was still with them. But what happened was the opposite of what we hoped for. The next day, his barking stopped completely. I didn't know what had happened to him. Mom must have gotten rid of him. I was oh, really now worried got about him. Snowball was my go. only friend. The now only one that made me feel that I wasn't actually dead. He disappeared. <laughs> hey. That day, I heard some heated discussion between my parents. You might wait, say wait, that wait, nothing wait, was new, wait, wait, wait. but this time, this it was Snowball different. My mom decided to, to leave Rick my dad. Morty? She accused no, him of no, no, no. having never been the perfect husband. She was crazy. He was the coolest dad a girl could ever wish for. He tried to persuade her to stay, but it was pointless. She screamed at the top of well, her voice. Less, it would have been better if she died that day. It's like a curse that won't go away unless I leave. The sound of the door slamming was the last thing I heard that day. I was incapable of changing any of the things around me or even the of way course. my mom and dad looked anything. at me. I was an invisible silent like watcher you. to how people acted when they thought no one was looking. Unfortunately, I wasn't just a watcher. Because of my inability to communicate with people, I became the perfect victim. A creature that looked like it was devoid of emotions. For four years, my mom used to abuse me mentally and physically. What did I ever do to her to deserve that? A part of me wanted to cry and the other part well, wanted to sick. fight. I was so full of pain and sadness. It was Don't torture. Cry. The following day, it was like I no longer existed inside the house. My dad was really depressed. He moved me to a nursing home, exactly like I'd expected would happen. I felt worthless now without Snowball, and without people around me, I became even more of a shell of my former self. Another year went by and everyone still thought I was in a deep coma. In the nursing house, everything was so quiet. No voices, no That's movements, nice. and no oh talking. Just a oh stranger God, just who moved me quietness. left and right every day and who made sure that my machines were working normally. The six year mark came and went, and then the seventh, and everything was the same. I used to figure out that the time from the nurses changing shifts every six hours. 
That meant that on the fourth time I was moved, a day would have passed. No one visited me during the three years that I spent there, except my friend Maisie. No one cared about me but her. I lived in terror. I knew every day would be exactly the same as the last one, but over the, and over but again. I totally I lost mean, any I hope I had of hearing another is. person. What? How can just a year go by? You said your imagination is waking you up the last time, right? So I mean, it should just take you a year to wake up. A year is a lot of days, right? Mm. It should have been just like you should have been in that coma for like a year. Because like a year is a lot of time. Like a year doesn't go blah, 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 blah. A year doesn't go by so fast. Like you what you're saying is years go by like this. Which is impossible. You have so much days to keep fluttering your eyes until you wake up, get out there and be somebody, right? You know what? I'm done. I'm done with these wax. Voice. Mm, I'm done but then with one night, my dad decided to visit me. I had no idea what date it was because I'd lost all sense of time. But it happened to be my 20th birthday. He held my hand and I couldn't believe it when I heard his voice. It felt like a dream. He told me, you won't be alone anymore. I'll be with you forever from now on. I can't believe you just turned 20. Emotions welled up in me and suddenly I could feel the familiar fluttering of my eyelids. I had to open my eyes. I couldn't stay like this anymore. My dad had his face buried in my shoulder and he was crying. He couldn't Seriously? see my face or my eyes. This is how it ends. This is how it ends. The, you thought you said the eye fluttering was... <laughs> but when he turned his head, he jumped and ran outside screaming at the top of his voice. Doctor, I need a doctor. Perhaps emotions have more power than we realize. My dad's love for me made me open my eyes once again. The doctors ran some tests on me, and none of them could explain what had happened. They only said the damage that her head suffered was apparently able to heal with time. Your daughter is out of her coma. To make sure I was able to hear them, the doctor asked me to blink twice. And I did it! Being able to communicate again, even in a simple way, felt like the best thing in the world. But even more than that was the fact that I was no longer a nobody. Dad was so excited. He didn't even know where to begin. But my movement and reactions were still limited. It would take time. There were. You know what this smells like? Seriously, times where I almost gave up, but I had to hold on to this. My dad promised never to leave me alone, and he kept his word. Whoa, whoa. And did you see those the shirts just Uno switch? Wait a second, they need to get better at this. Limited, the shirt, it would take Uno time. Switch, like there were seriously times where I almost gave up, but I had to hold on to this. My dad promised never to leave me alone, and he kept his word. <laughs> shirt. Everybody, 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 pay attention to the shirt right, this shirt right here. Look at it, it's in the Uno switch. Like, pay attention to that shirt. It's in the Uno switch. Watch this. At night, my dad moved my bed. To <coughs> Watch this. It's gonna Uno switch. There like. were seriously times where I almost gave up, but I had like, to hold on like to how this. Did she, my dad she got never a coma to leave just because alone, you went super he kept like, his word. At night, my dad moved my bed towards the window. It was the first Look time I'd seen the sky for the last seven years. Able to communicate again. I call bull. I call bull. His love for me made me emotions did it for you. Seriously. Then how did you not wake up when you were with your dad? I had to open my eyes. I couldn't stay like this anymore. Oh can't believe you God. just turned she, she opened her eyes because of raw willpower. There's no way. Oh, my God. That's so whack. Because literally, that's the wackiest way to wake up. I thought her imagination would get so strong. Like, it would get so strong, so till that... That she, she forced herself to get open. Not this emotion thing. She could have... The, but, but, but wasn't the year at her home? Like the three years went by? Was it those birthdays too? Why didn't the dad visit her if those were birthdays too? <clears throat> why didn't dad... Why didn't the dad visit... You know, what it said one year go by. And every, everybody knows that there's a month of the year where... You grow older in age, right? 
Then why didn't the dad visit her on year one, year two, or year three when she was in the house? That makes no sense. Why is she opening her eyes now? What about Snowflake? Snowball, what? Whack, that is so whack. So whack. Perhaps emotions have more power than we realize. My dad's love for me made me open my eyes once again. The doctors <laughs> ran... Mm. ...test on me, and none of them could explain what had happened. They only said the damage that her head suffered was apparently able to heal with time. Your daughter is out of her coma. To make sure I was able to hear them, the doctor asked me to blink twice. And I did it! Being able to communicate again, even in a simple way, felt like the best thing in the world. But even more than that was the fact that I was no longer a nobody. Dad was so excited. He didn't even know where to begin. But my movement and reactions were still limited. It would take time. There were seriously times where I almost gave up, but I had to hold on to this. My dad promised never to leave me alone, and he but my dad wouldn't give up. He knew there would come a day where I'd be okay again. He must have gotten sick of waiting for that day. It's true that I was happy for recovering gradually, but even then I didn't feel completely free. People around me were still controlling everything. When and what I ate, if I could stay in bed, or if I should be sitting on a chair. It didn't matter how many times I blinked, I couldn't say anything except for yes and no. One day, my dad came in all happy. He told me that the doctors had finally agreed to let him take me on a wheelchair around the city. It was the first time in so long that I get to move and finally leave my bed. I was scared. The outside world must have changed a lot. I didn't know if I should go. But I needed this. It was time to get back out there. I remember one moment from that day very vividly. My dad left me alone in the car on her way back in order to buy something quickly from the store. A woman passed by, looked at me, and smiled. I didn't know the reason behind her smile back then, and I'll never know. But that small smile, a small human interaction, made me feel better again. That woman's smile is what pushed me to continue. Seeing my dad come into my room was always the best moment of my your day. Dad's However, I wasn't pleased when my dad entered my room with the press who came to listen to my story. Apparently, they decided that my story was worth being told and shared. The press ruined my peace and quiet. My mom even returned just so she could be in the spotlight. She returned after disappearing for so long, just for fame. The press did help a bit, though. My dad had them help us look for solutions and treatments that might help me get better. My mom, though, well, she didn't exactly show up because she suddenly remembered the importance of family. She was just there for fame, and Dad wanted me to decide if she could stay or not. Mom's answer was, My dear daughter, do you want your mommy back in your life? I blinked nonstop, and this meant I wanted her to go, because I knew she didn't care if I lived or died. My dad was a person who'd taken care of me my whole life. Of course he had weak moments where he wasn't by my side, but at least he still loved me enough and thought of me all the time. And for me, that was enough. And guess what? My dad got in contact with one of the big companies that made medical devices. They had created a device that gets this implanted inside the brain that. and is connected to they a special computer. Employees. The device sends electric waves to the computer that then says the words out loud. That company heard about my condition in the media and were happy to help me. The first time they tried this on me was pretty funny. Everything I said made everyone laugh, but for me it was sad because I never got an answer to my question. What I asked was, what happened to my dog Snowball? My story might be sad. Some of you might believe it, and others will say that it is just a product of my imagination. But what can't be denied is that there are a lot of people like me in this world who no one knows anything about because they don't have the ability to connect with people. It wouldn't hurt to act nicely towards them and not to ignore them, because like me, they have feelings too. My suffering lasted for seven years, but I truly believe that the star that fell that night was the reason my wish of being able to talk again came true. Everything happens for a reason. Did you like my story? Don't forget to tell me what you think in the comments below. And to like and subscribe to the channel. All y'all idiots. Just joking, all y'all idiots. But what? But why? The story touched my heart. The story touched my heart and almost broke it because I almost snapped. 
because there's absolutely no way why did she just um you know what if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe tell a friend that i'm here so subscribe tell a friend to subscribe and i'll see you all pretty much next time goodbye